Thank you very much to Thermo for the invitation and especially to come to Venice, which is always nice to, to be here again. In fact, I was in the room years ago in another conference. So um, I am the last one, so I am the last one before you go. we go to the uh, concert. I will try to be brief uh, and also in time, so I had... Uh, my presentation is a bit within the topic, of course, but I will bring uh, most of the presentation, most of the talks here are about, let's say, conventional pops or most of the well-known pops. Uh, here I will be talking about these, let's call it new ones, they are not really new ones, but the fluorinated and some of the other ones. It's not your fault, apparently. So uh, the presentation will, will show. Try now. Is not going now. Okay, thank you. The presentation will show a few examples here on on, um, on uh, different different uh, different compounds, perfluorinated compounds. We are working on this area since few years, uh, not only in water because this was originally our field, but by other samples, uh, human samples, uh, sediments. Uh, brominated from retardants, a few examples, and the last one on the chloride rain. So it's a brief, it's a summary of some activities, and it will be shots of, of presentation. It will be different uh, talks, so I was asked to be brief, and I will be brief, but if somebody's interested in any of this, most of it is, is, in pre is, is, is being written, or is, has been written, or is, it will be published. So the basic idea here is, I will first talk about the perforated compounds. As you know, this group of chemicals all these are allogenated. We are here in a pop meeting, in an allogenated meeting as well. So all of them are from retardants. All of them are in the regulatory system now in the Stockholm Convention, OSPA. And recently, the European Union has also, in the draft, uh, in the last draft, has the, the PFOS in the, in the list of new chemicals to be added. So there is a group, it's a quite complex group, although most of the people only looks at PFOS and PFOA. There are different chemical groups, quite interesting. This, this is a very interesting group of chemicals because for the chemist is a, a surfactant type. So they have hydrophobic, hydrophobicity type. So they can, they can also go, they can be transported abroad. They, they can be in the water, they can be in the lipid. So they are everywhere. That makes them quite interesting for environmental chemist. Then uh, something about the, well, the prominated, they were already in some talks here. I will only be here one, one shot about what we did in with the racemic mixtures. And the last thing that we are also working in this field is the Declorate Plus. You know, this, this has been a new topic. This is in collaboration with uh, Canadian also Begoña, which is here, with Melan Alay. We did some work on that, just to give you a, an, an outline about these things. So I will start with some recent examples on, we have different equipment, not only thermal, we have other, other branches, but I will start with the uh, online approaches. So, so here you see, different systems that we are using for water samples. Uh, now we are mainly using the online approach. You will see the example is the Equan, with coupled to, to, to Vantag, to LC. So online reconciliation. This is a very old methodology. In fact, I was glad that Term also had this now online and in the same equipment. In fact, what, for my presentation, the headlines are uh, mainly what, what my interest in. I am mainly an LC and MMS. I, I will do work also on GCMS with the work, of course, but. I think it was a big achievement that Thermo incorporated the turbo flow and the equal into the system. I think this is for the first time one company has all the equipment in one, in one system. Because the, the, the competitor that was already in the market since more than 20 years is the prospect from Spanholland, but is, is never with the same company. So you need to buy the equipment in one side, the pre-concentration units or whatever you want to do, and then you need to buy the MS. I think this is a big achievement because everything is controlled by the same, same equipment. So the online that we have for some digestion, okay, for milk uh, and for blood samples, we do the digestion and then, uh, let's say, centrifugation and, and liquids. We have the preconcentrate. We also use for the solid samples the uh, accelerated solid extraction or personal liquid extraction with the cleanup with, with the acid. Uh, I will. Uh, these are different equipment that we will. I'll show you first an example on a Q trap, and then mainly the examples are with the vantage either using the configuration of, of the equine or the, for water samples or the turbo flow for the more complex samples. Uh, an example that was a paper published recently on the perforated compounds in Arctic samples. 
uh, we were able to go there in the Tierra del Fuego and Antarctica. There were different samples collected in order to know that these compounds can also reach clean, uh, clean places. Basically, samples were collected from soils, algae, uh, penguin dung, which is basically seed, tissue, etc. Uh, and what you can see here is that, uh, well, let's say, different chemicals, the exan exanoic acid. We, we do a long, a long list of uh, perforated compounds. Uh, not only, as I told you before, as a PFOS, but also and this is the hexanoic acid, the perfluoro sulfonamide, this is the, the octanoic sulfonamide. So you can see that uh, this is the Tierra del Fuego, which was the most dirty place as, as, is, as is expected, because it was more human activity. You can see concentrations up to 2,000 nanograms per gram, and you can see it depends on basically the diet of the, of the birds is very important because it comes to the food. You know, many of these chemicals, uh, you know, the pups is coming by the food, by the dust. So this, in this case, uh, we can attribute it to the food, to the food chain. Uh, we have, uh, this is in the Antarctica region, and this is much cleaner samples. You can see the levels are much lower as compared to before in the nanos program. Different groups that were the most relevant, hexanoic, octanoic acid, donanoic, uh, butane, butanoic sulfonide, etc. Here, the, the most, uh, the most uh, contaminated samples were the penguin bank and penguin tissue, which could be introduced to the diet. So we think that this is the diet uh, thing. Uh, obviously, these areas which are remote, but you know, in, in the last years, they are getting more and more tourists and more human activities. So probably feeding and the food activities makes that these compounds are, are uh, where you can find the highest concentrations are coming to this. The lowest uh, value, con the, value, the lowest contaminated uh, samples were corresponding to the soil samples which was, in the case, can be associated to atmospheric uh, transport. Some of this, I, I will not go into the detail, but some of this perforated can go to atmospheric transport. Other ones, they, they are, one, one they are called flyers, the other ones can be more uh, swimmers. But so, let's say that there are different behaviors. It is a, for this point of view, the, the group of chemicals, perforated chemicals, is very interesting uh, from, from the chemistry point of view. I go to another example. So, the, the, the other example is a recent paper which is in press at this moment, is uh, the application of turbo flow with online equan for analysis of water samples for perforated compounds. Perforated compounds, uh, just to give you an idea, uh, at this moment there is no regulation, although there is already a draft in Europe. There are recommendations. The first country in Europe was Germany. They recommended for drinking water 200, between 200 and 300 nanograms per liter. Uh, also in the U.S. there are recommendations, but I think the European Commission will, uh, will accept one of these PFOS as a, as a, as a target compound for, to be monitored. Basically, this is a pre-concentration system, which is coupled online, it not, has nothing special, but I was glad to see now companies that they have this in the system, because I was claiming for this for many years, and okay, what you can do is that, that with very few amount of water you can pre-concentrate your, your sample. In that in, for instance, with five mils is enough to get to go down up to one nanogram per liter or to one to ten nanograms per liter. So now, compared to 20 years ago with uh, when I started LCMS, more than 20, at this moment the instruments are very sensitive. What you need is um, devices, pre-concentration devices, that they are able to pre-concentrate your sample, but you need very low amount of sample, but also doing the cleanup. Because if you don't clean your sample, since the machine is so sensitive, you will also detect the interferences. So basically here is, is the device from the Equan coupled to a, to, a, to a Vantage system. And here we, we, compare, or we did a study of samples between Spain and Germany in collaboration with the Fresenius Institute in East time, Thomas Nepper. So basically here, what you can see in the one, we did surface water and drinking water samples. You can see levels with different groups of chemicals, the, uh, the exanite, uh, the phosphonics. You can see here the, uh, the, uh, the phosphonic, the buton, the, Butanoic, 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 the, the phosphonic uh, acids were compounds that for the first time in surface water. So they were quite a different uh, groups apart from the PFOAS that they were detected. Here is the list different locations in Germany and concentrations. Usually, uh, as, as expected, in surface water the concentrations were much higher than drinking waters. You can see here that well, there is a list uh, the, the concentrations uh, can go up to, up to nanograms that was for drinking water, but for surface water you can see here surface water, we, we could go uh, much higher concentrations. In, in fact, in one case in Spain, we got up to 3,000, 3 micrograms per liter in surface water. No? 
but now there is a, uh, also a draft uh, directive or a draft recommendation or guideline, I don't know exactly, but because I need to still to look carefully to the document, that recommends in surface water level uh, up to 32 microns per liter level. In drinking water, obviously, these levels are much lower. We also did uh, drinking water samples, and as I mentioned to you, the drinking water samples were a few nanograms per liter, because the treatment plant usually removes these compounds. Is interest of that? Yes, these compounds are quite interesting, because to know um, why in the water, uh, there are um, certain amounts in drinking water, but since these compounds are also in the diet, in, in, in the dust, everywhere, if you need to make these calculations, what is the influence of these compounds in your body weight, it will be very important to know the introduction through the drinking water. So uh, we have uh, this profile between, different profile between Spain and Germany, is due basically to the uses of these chemicals in different parts of, the, of this. I, I don't, cannot go more into the details, but if you are interested, I, you can, I can send you this. <laughs> the second example, which uh, is using the turbo flow technology, turbo flow technology is quite interesting technology, I think it's for me, it's a big achievement, and not because I'm in a thermo-invited meeting, but I always say this, I said this since the beginning, uh, because it combines a technology which is absorption and size exclusion chromatography at the same time, because it really, when you inject your sample, the small column is a turbo flow, is the turbulent flow, so the small molecules, they get trapped, and the, the large molecules, proteins, they go through the waste. Then you create this turbo flow, you, you clean your sample online, this is very important, it was not possible before. And since you have a sensitive instrument, you are able to detect samples. For instance, in, uh, in, in blood samples, you, you take uh, several microliters, you, you in inject your several microliters of sample, a liquid of, of, the, of, of the sample, and you can detect, you can go low in your detection limits at, mi at microgram per liter level of these compounds in blood. The advantage is that you clean your sample and you, you really get rid of the dirty. I can, uh, I am not showing too many chromatograms because I had limited time. So the, the, the thing is that you need to, get to buy your instrument with this device, but it's possible. Then we use, briefly, we use two, two columns in tandem, Cyclone and C18 columns, which are as prepared as a switching valve system. And uh, this you need to have, of course, uh, an excellent cleanup system, injection volume 20 microliters, flow, flow rate, etc. This, this low pollution 250 microliters and another one. So with this, these specifications, I can give it to you. You can really get, you can go through many analyses, and certainly you can obtain much better results as, as compared to other technologies in, in the sense that you get cleaner samples, your instrument will be lo longer time. Here we compared uh, samples from Spain and Greece, uh, also perforated compounds, hexane sulfonates. This is uh, Barcelona. Barcelona are higher uh, levels. This is in ma nanograms per liter, or let's say if you divide it by 1,000, it will be micrograms per liter between uh, up to 400, 500 micrograms per liter. Uh, uh, in, in, uh, in they can go in, in, uh, in, in Barcelona samples. Then if you go to the Greek samples, it, this was in Heraklion, obviously it's much lower. So the levels are much lower, they go up to 100. It was expected, it's a clean, much cleaner area, it's in the fields. But then, interesting to see, and here you can see uh, some samples with, uh, usually the compounds, they are exine sulfonates or octanoic acid, and some samples with octanoic sulfonic. The interesting part is when you compare our data from Spain to the US, you can see in the US much higher. Okay, uh, here I put Spain, but I put, we put that also other data from Belgium, Kovacci has did something similar and other authors. Spain is one of the, and Greece is one of the lowest uh, values uh, because why? There is, it's easy to imagine these compounds are coming from carpets, from dust. In the Mediterranean countries, at least one advantage, we are in an economical crisis, but at least we live more outside than inside, and we get clean samples. And our diet is also different. So in this sense, uh, I think all this data is expected uh, Spain uh, are much lower if you compare to Americans, which go up to very high levels in my grand per liter level. And the, 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 sorry, the Belgium data is around, uh, around between something like that, a bit higher than Spain, something like here, yeah, something like around 200, something like that. So the Belgium data that I saw from Kovacci and there are other data. But at least uh, some of the Mediterranean countries, we can presume that we have for this kind of compounds, which are uh, uh, especially for, in this kind of blood samples, but for uh, 
different population and also for the kids which are different studies uh, it's very important the people who live inside you touch the furniture you have carpet you are much more exposed to, to all these chemicals than, than if you live more uh, let's say the open air or good temperature and the last example that I want to show you is is about all these chemicals which are uh, other, other allogenated compounds, they are hexabromocyclodecan. Just one example, on the, it was already discussed before, on the nentiomers, and then I will go to the dechlorar clues. In that case, I, well, I want to show you a paper that was published a couple of years ago that the enrichment of, uh, it's very important to look at the um, antiomeric selectivity of these chemicals and to use chiral columns to differentiate alpha and beta and gamma, sorry, and to know which ones are back or I think this is very important. This is another value to the pop analysis to see really which ones are the responsibles of the, of the activity. And the last example, which is also a paper which is being uh, impressed, is the use of the Chloran Plus, uh, which is a of Myrex. Although it was manufactured during many years, only, only since 2006, that Roland Heights uh, uh, detected this compound in the Great, great Lakes, uh, then it, people made, uh, took attention about these chemicals. These are different chemicals, they were also used as front retardants. And uh, uh, this work, uh, this is a, a paper of development, also the, the, the Chloral Plus has to the thin and anti isomers, so they are different, you can do it by GCMS in that case. And here we are now running different samples of uh, crustaceans, primary uh, fingerprints, uh, tertiary consumers, so you can see the accumulation of these chemicals in the, in the, the food chain. And then, uh, just to give you here some data on primary consumers, on secondary consumers, and tertiary consumers, there is not much to see data on these chemicals, on this Declorant Plus, but they are found there. Uh, and this work was also done in, previously in collaboration with the Canada, and, we did, and with Begonia, we compared Jimenez from Madrid. We compared some data, uh, and you will see it in the last overhead. This is uh, also data from dolphins in Brazil that also we are analyzing. We have uh, this, this, this work is being written. Also uh, quite interesting because they were also detected in the dolphins of Brazil. So you know these new pops, as soon as somebody detects somewhere, if you start to look at other organisms, you also find them. And especially if you, if you look for, for this type of organism like dolphins and, and, and uh, at the last chain. So here you can see the chloran plus, the chloran 6602, 603, the levels, nanogram per gram lipid weight of the different chemicals. This is the, the data on some of these the chloran plus, um, the chloran plus, the chloran 602, 603 and the plus, which are uh, also of interest nowadays, especially more in the US than in Europe, because you will see in the next data. Uh, this is the paper that was already published that you can see if you compare uh, uh, the Falco Peregrinus, the Peregrine Falcon from uh, Spain and, and Canada, you can see that the Canadian data is much higher because of the uses, uh, we presume that of the uses in Canada and the, and the US, it was much more used than in Europe, so the, it's expected that the data, that the levels are higher, by accumulation high, are, are higher in these in this, in, in this samples that compared to the European data. And to finalize, I know it's quite quick, but maybe you get an overview, but if you are interested in a specific topic, I can give you all the information. We have, uh, I think, perforated this uh, very interesting group of chemicals, and I started, we started to do this, and they, they basically, because, well, you need, I did not explain it, but everybody knows that you need a special LCMS, because, you know, this is Teflon, and you need to have a really good blank system, and your MS should be tubing should be changed, you know, all these things. So, but I think it's a very interesting group of chemicals that, and the proof is that, sorry, it's not, uh, is that the proof is that has been introduced now in the legislation, also in the water. They can be found everywhere in different products, in different uh, groups. Although they stopped production only in Europe, you know, in China it was produced much later. In Europe around 2002 it was stopped by 3M. But then the Chinese, of course, they need to grow, they need Teflon for uh, everything. Um, uh, they are globally spread, so it's very interesting chemicals, and they are, there is a, a whole bunch of family of chemicals. Uh, another chemical group is the HVDC, you know, all these flint retardants which are um, coming, they are found everywhere. So we, the study that I'll show you, the example was in breast milk, uh, and also is, there is a link on, 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 on breast milk and, and the levels of prominated flint retardants. And the Declaran Plus, which is now one of the new, the new 
for the new chlorinated compass, which is being studied, and, and the more and more, more data is being detected in the literature, as you know, and probably some of you are also working in these chemicals. And that's it. So I hope with this information I was in time. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.